everyone. Say, have you ever had a dream? One that seems so real that you woke up startled with your heart pounding? Well, in the Bible, there was a king named Nebuchadnezzar, and he had one of these. Only his dream was about a huge statue, one that was smashed to pieces by a stone. He was so upset by the dream that he couldn't even sleep. He didn't know what that dream meant. That is, until God revealed it to him. Join us today as we hear about Daniel and the king's dream. Last week we learned that Daniel was a man who loved and served God. When the Babylonian army led by King Nebuchadnezzar attacked his homeland, Daniel and three of his friends were taken captive and brought to Babylon. Even though Daniel was now living in a foreign land where no one followed the one true God, Daniel remained faithful. Because he was faithful, God gave him wisdom and the ability to interpret dreams. This week we'll look at chapter 2 and see how Daniel used these God-given abilities. When chapter 2 begins, we see that King Nebuchadnezzar has been having dreams. Dreams which troubled him. He couldn't understand what those dreams meant, so he called some of the so-called wise men of his kingdom. But these men really weren't wise. They were magicians, enchanters, astrologers, and sorcerers. These men worshipped false gods. The king gave these men an impossible task. He asked them to tell him the dream itself and then to interpret the dream, to tell what it means. Like, how can you know someone's dream? These men couldn't do that. They had no wisdom and didn't seek truth from the one true God. When the king saw that the wise men couldn't do what he asked, he decided to put them to death and along with them, all the wise men in the whole kingdom. This included Daniel and his three friends. So what do you think Daniel did when he found out about this? Did he panic? Did he run? Let's watch and find out. Two years after rising to the throne of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar had a terrible dream. This dream frightened him so much that he couldn't sleep. King Nebuchadnezzar, in anguish and desperate to learn what the dream meant, called in all the wise men known to him to see if any of them could interpret his dream. The wise men came before King Nebuchadnezzar and asked him to tell them about his dream. But the king refused. King Nebuchadnezzar demanded that the wise men first tell him what he dreamed, and then what the dream meant. The king declared, If you can do this, I will give you great rewards. If not, I will have you put to death. In disbelief of the king's request, the wise men said, King Nebuchadnezzar, what you ask is impossible. No one can do what you ask. Only a god could tell you your dream. This made King Nebuchadnezzar so angry that he ordered that all his wise men be put to death, including Daniel and his friends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When the king's chief soldier, Arioch, came to capture Daniel, he asked Arioch what was going on. Arioch explained the situation and Daniel went to King Nebuchadnezzar to ask for time to interpret the dream. The king agreed, and Daniel hurried back to see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego so that they could pray for God's help. That night, God revealed to Daniel the king's dream and its meaning. The next morning, Daniel went to Arioch and said, Don't execute the wise men of Babylon. I will interpret the king's dream. When Arioch brought Daniel before King Nebuchadnezzar, the troubled, tired king asked Daniel, Can you tell me what I saw in my dream? Daniel replied, No one could tell you this. 
but there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. He showed me your dream and what it means. Daniel told the king, God showed you the future through your dream. In your dream, you saw a statue with a head of gold, chest and arms of silver, belly and thighs of bronze, legs of iron, and feet of iron mixed with clay. Then a rock smashed the statue. The rock became a mountain that filled the whole earth. You, king, are the head of gold, and every other part of the statue are the kingdoms that will come after you. The rock represents a kingdom that God will establish that will last forever. King Nebuchadnezzar bowed before Daniel and showed him great honor for all that God had spoken through him. The king said, Surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings, the one who can reveal the greatest of mysteries. For his service, King Nebuchadnezzar promoted Daniel to a high position and placed him in charge of all the wise men. At Daniel's request, the king also promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to rule over all the provinces of Babylon. So Daniel knew and interpreted the dream that the king had because God helped him. At first, King Nebuchadnezzar sought answers from people who worshipped false gods. These men didn't have any answers because they didn't seek the truth from the one true God. But Daniel and his three friends had true wisdom. When Daniel heard what was happening, he and his three friends prayed to God. Then, in a vision, God gave Daniel the understanding that he needed. God revealed the dream to Daniel. The Bible says, If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. That's exactly what Daniel and his friends did. They prayed for wisdom about this matter, and God answered their prayers. And what did Daniel do next? He praised God. We should always give God thanks and praise. So why did God give King Nebuchadnezzar this dream? What was the purpose? God wanted to remind the king that all earthly kingdoms will be crushed. They will end, including the kingdom of Babylon. The only kingdom that will never end is the kingdom of God. God wanted Nebuchadnezzar to think more of God's kingdom instead of his own. Because God is above all. Let's pray together for a moment. Dear God, thank you so much for letting us hear about Daniel and the king's dream. Help us to follow the example of Daniel, a faithful believer who trusted you. Help us also to be reminded of the king as well, that your kingdom is above all. Nothing in this world will last, but your kingdom is forever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So remember, we need to be like Daniel. When trouble comes, don't panic. Pray. Trust God to help you. And remember to thank and praise him every day.